Your Excellency Juan Lorenco, President of the Republic of Angola, my dear sister and our esteemed host, Her Excellency Dr. Anna Diaz Lorenco, the First Lady of the Republic of Angola, my dear sisters, First Ladies from Cape Verde, Sao Tome, and Principal Mozambique and Nigeria, the third First Lady of Namibia, Her Excellency Mrs. Monica Gaibos, the Executive Secretary of Auckland, Dr. Nagos, the Representative of the First Lady of Namibia, the Honorable Minister of Women, Gender and Children's Affairs of Cote d'Ivoire, Ministers of Government, Members of Parliament, Civil Society members here present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning, bon dia. Let me from the outset thank our very generous host. I believe I speak from, for everyone here when I say that we are having an amazing time in your beautiful city of Luanda. Your exceptional hospitality will remain in our hearts and we are all incredibly thankful. I also want to personally thank you, Madam Anna, for gracing my program in Sierra Leone as we commemorate the November 18th World Day of Support of Rape Victims in 2023. I am also excited that what brings us together is what we care about as First Ladies, the lives and futures of girls and young women in Africa. The United Nations estimates that Africa's population will double over 2 billion by 2050. Of that number, 70% will be young people and over half of those still will be girls and adolescent girls. So by 2050, Africa will have the world's youngest and largest workforce with the majority of them being girls and young women. We therefore have both a challenge and a great opportunity. The opportunity is to help prepare and make ready a future Africa where girls and young women will fully participate as equal skilled, innovative, entrepreneurial citizens. We all want a sustainable economic future to which girls and women contribute fully. We want an Africa where women and women voices are fully present in all spaces and not only in so-called space, safe spaces or spaces defined and allocated to them by men or tradition. It is my humble view that we can improve the chances of girls achieving economic success by promoting human capital development and supporting the nutrition and health of girls by keeping girls in school and promoting access to STEM and high quality education by removing cultural and other structural barriers of exclusion, by promoting political and economic inclusion, and by strengthening our gender equality laws and institutions. We must lower or remove all the obstacles to the upward advancement of African girls and women. We must advocate tirelessly to change or introduce laws, policies, structural changes and cultural mindset changes so that young women can have a future of advancement and opportunity. These are not optional actions. These are matters of human rights, pillars of dignity, actions of equality and cornerstone of national progress. Sexual health and reproductive rights are about human rights and a failure to protect and promote them can be a significant barrier to achieving gender equality and social justice. Our action must therefore be bold, holistic and not piecemeal. As African women, we must have absolute control over our own bodies. Our bodies should no longer be defined, limited, and violated just because men or society can. We should discard misinformation and cultural limitations about our own bodies. 
and we must challenge norms that are discriminatory. We should no longer be asked to wait, and we must not wait to be asked. We should speak out and speak up about our own bodies and about everything that affects our sexual reproductive health rights. We must therefore make every effort in our advocacy campaigns to identify the key sexual and reproductive health issues in our specific context, since this may vary from country to country and from one community to another. It could be sexual and gender-based violence. It could be child marriage. It could be about nutrition. It could be about access to education, advanced skills training, and equal pay. It could be about political and social representation or gender mainstreaming in public institutions and in private sectors. It could be about overturning stereotypes and cultural stigma about menstruation. It could even be about access to affordable and higher quality healthcare services for communities, commun communicable diseases, and such medical conditions such as fistula. It could be about promotions, disease prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment or management of diseases like cervical and ovarian cancer that disproportionately affect women. It could be about the whole spectrum of maternal, antenatal, and perennial care. It could be about sexual and reproductive health education or access to productivity and sexual health services. It could be about financial empowerment and financial inclusion. Or it could be about encoding or reviewing laws that affect sexual and reproductive health rights and ensuring that our respective governments respect, protect, and fulfill those rights in her entirety. In fact, sexual and reproductive health matters are as diverse as they are complex and interconnected. Once we identify the map, out the key sexual and reproductive health issues, we can then proceed to prioritize interventions we can make. We could do this in solidarity or collaboration with identified stakeholders, groups in communities, across government, or with international partners, or we could do so based on available resources. Let me briefly suggest a few ways in which I think we can collectively take concrete actions to make the required progress to achieve the future we want for our girls and women especially as it relates to sexual and reproductive health. First, we agree that an informed population makes a better choice and can be moved to action about issues that matter to them. Comprehensive sexual and reproductive health education is therefore most important. This should be undertaken in a non-judgmental and culturally sensitive ways that recognize diversities among girls and women, and in a language and in an environment accessible to the target audience. This public awareness campaign should be structured and far-reaching and should include all sectors of society, traditional and religious leaders, educators, civil society organization, non-governmental organization, and the media. Public education about sexual and gender-based violence, for instance, seeks to encourage survivors to seek justice, support, and also eliminate stigma associated with being a survivor. Girls and women must also be informed about the availability of resources and services for sexual and reproductive health and what they need to do to access those services or resources. Girls and women must be informed about uh, uh, must be informed about and get easy access to places where they can receive care and holistic support. In Sierra Leone, survivors of sexual gender-based violence can access one-stop centers located in major hospitals where they can receive holistic care and psychosocial support. Secondly, most of the disparities concerning sexual health and reproductive rights are structural. Therefore, government should review or create the necessary legislative 
and regulatory framework within which this issue can be tackled. In Sierra Leone, the government amend, amended the Sexual Offenses Act 2019 to prescribe stricter and harsher sentencing guidelines for rape and other forms of gender-based violence. Recently, Parliament passed the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act that both clarifies previous legal ambiguities, imposes harsh penalties on offenders and ensure access to education and support for young girls affected by child marriage. This followed the passing of the Gender Equality and Women Empowerment Act that established a legal minimum of 30% for the representation of women and for financial inclusion and empowerment among others. For these issues, sexual and reproductive health rights to be addressed, there must be a fundamental shift in societal attitudes and norms. We must challenge and change the beliefs, practices, and structures that perpetuate violence and discrimination. This requires the active involvement of boys and men, traditional and community leaders, and deep engagement with peer groups. The goal is to raise awareness and generate community action. Together, a culture of respect, equality, and zero tolerance can be promoted. This begins in our homes, schools, and communities. Parents and caregivers must teach and model respect and non-violence. School must provide safe and supportive environment where all students can thrive. Community leaders must speak out against violence and so, uh, against violence and support survivors. Let me close by asking all of us to recommit protecting and promoting the health, well-being, and rights of young people. To our young people, I urge you to be champions of change. Stand up against violence and discrimination and support your peers in making healthy and respectful choices. Your voices, actions, and leadership are critical in ushering in change in Africa. Together, we can and we must build a society where every individual, regardless of gender, can live well with dignity, respect, equality, Together, let us create a brighter future for our continent. To us leaders, the future of African girls and women is in our hands, and we must use our voices to advocate collectively and campaign relentlessly as we remove the obstacle and strengthen their chances to achieve economic and social successes. This summit here today is about pursuing that singular objective as first ladies. They say the squeaker wheels get greasy and we will not remain quiet about injustice that we staple the majority of Africa's young population. We should and we will raise our voices and we will do that together as first ladies. What strengthens our individual voices is when we stand together as one, work together and talk with one voice. So I am very grateful for this opportunity to stand together with all my African sisters, brothers, and co-advocates to say we are equal. If we must win, we must work collectively, informed, empowered, and provide the requisite support structure and resources. Advocate inclusively and across the whole of government and society, and seek to provide holistic and sustainable solutions on this question of sexual health and reproductive health. Together, we can change the future of hundreds of millions of girls in our continent. It is us Africans that will have to change our own destiny. I want to say thank you to my dear sister Anna for putting this wonderful event together and for allowing us to use our voices in a very positive way. My sister, you are a trailblazer and you have led from the front, the back and the middle. And I want to say I'm very proud that I'm with you in this journey. I thank you all for your kind attention. Together, we can make a difference. And I'm going to take this from the First Lady of Nigeria, Obrigada. Thank you very much.